Now, the global economy is at a crossroads. Web3 and blockchain-based systems present an opportunity for traditional financial institutions to optimize business processes, streamline operations, increase efficiency, and of course, reduce costs. But in order for enterprises to leverage blockchains, they must have a tamper-proof way to connect their existing Web2 backends to any blockchain in the Web3 space. Chainlink is the leading Web3 service provider, having enabled trillions of dollars in transaction volumes for DeFi, insurance, gaming, NFTs and other major industries. Sergey Nazarov, the co-founder of Chainlink, joins us now to discuss how they're helping bridge traditional finance to DeFi. Sergey, it's good to see you. Welcome to Cybos TV. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Look, why do you think it's more important now perhaps for traditional financial institutions to actually have a blockchain strategy that is actionable why the urgency i, I think their clients are uh, starting to ask more and more for blockchain related assets and digital assets um, i see a lot of sessions on that here at cybos this year and i see uh, a very large amount of heads of digital asset titles and a number of uh, even subunits and subsidiaries being generated out of banks to take on the digital assets business, starting from custody. But um, just like we predicted that everyone would get into custody a few years ago, um, I think it's very clear to me that they're going to go well beyond custody. And so having a blockchain uh, technical strategy and market strategy uh, is, is critical, I think, to staying relevant in the eyes of clients uh, because they're going to continue to ask for custody of uh, digital assets. and to actually go far beyond custody of digital assets. Looking ahead, what do current economic shifts mean for institutional interests in DeFi? Like, how do you see DeFi space growing over the next few years? Generally speaking, because blockchains create trust uh, benefits, they allow people to trust counterparties. If traditional financial systems don't create trust between counterparties or don't create enough clarity about why somebody should rely on a counterparty, then an alternative method of generating that trust becomes more attractive. Blockchains and crypto cryptographic systems like blockchains are really the next generation of how trust is going to be generated between counterparties. And it's this um, need for a kind of a cryptographic truth dynamic that I think will drive even more adoption of DeFi and uh, more compliant forms of, of blockchain uh, financial products. So I think that we're, we're going to be in a world where the trust between counterparties is not going to get stronger, it's going to get weaker, and therefore technically enabled forms of trust, like the cryptographic truth generated by blockchains, will be uh, the new gold standard for how counterparties relate to each other. Right, so given that, what do you see as perhaps the biggest challenges on the immediate horizon in terms of bridging traditional finance to, to, uh, to, towards De DeFi? I, I think there are three large challenges specifically for, for institutions. The first challenge is compliance, which institutions are very sensitive to. That relates to identity uh, and AML, KYC and identity data. Uh, at Chainlink, we have a system called DECO, which allows identity data to go on many different chains and essentially solve that problem, allowing contracts and participants in those contracts to be compliant. The second big challenge is connectivity. So the problem of multiple different chains being places where people want to conduct transactions with your uh, multinational institution. For that, we have something called CCIP, the Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol, which is a global standard for how existing systems can connect to multiple chains through one integration and through one interface, simplifying that problem down to one integration rather than tens or hundreds of integrations into many different chains. And then the final problem is privacy. This is uh, one of the core problems for enterprises generally, even beyond the capital markets industry, is how do I keep information or contract details private? And the solution we recommend there is having an off-chain computation environment uh, called an Oracle network, where you can actually select the people or the nodes that are doing the computation for you. And therefore, you can uh, use certain consultancies or whatever firms that you really want to create those computations for you. Um, in, in a, in a privacy-preserving way. So I think if uh, our industry, the, the blockchain and cryptographic truth industry, can solve uh, institutions' need for compliance, ease connectivity so that they can connect to multiple chains through one easy integration through something like CCIP, and if the information that goes on chain 
uh, or that chains interact with can remain private. I think those three problems being solved will, will very quickly accelerate the hundreds of trillions of dollars in value that is uh, here at this conference and frankly wants to go to a blockchain environment, but needs those problems solved in order to do it. You've given us some fine examples there of how these challenges can be met, but how would you say traditional financial institutions can overcome some of the challenges of, of inoperability uh, by connecting existing systems to blockchain? I mean, in, in kind of a self-interested way, I, I advocate for uh, having a single standard, uh, a single interface that allows you to use multiple chains at once. That's really what our work on CCIP is about. It's about creating a single abstraction layer, a single interface, through which a bank can use tens and then hundreds of chains without having to integrate with each one of those chains. And so that um, kind of choice is really, do I want to integrate with 100 chains or do I want to integrate with one framework that allows me to use you know, this year's 10 chains, next year's 100 chains, and the next 100 chains after that? And the fragmentation and the amount of different chains, even if they're application-specific chains, will only continue to increase in our industry. So what, what we're seeing is that banks that are getting involved and are having those subsidiaries that are focused on digital assets and blockchain things are already facing this problem. And they're very receptive to having a single platform that can allow them to integrate into all chains through one efficient, well-managed, ma well-maintained uh, integration. And so that, you know, is once again, a very self-interested way is, is my recommendation, but it also stands on, it, on its merits because it's one integration to get you to all the chains instead of 10 or 100 integrations, many of which you would then need to maintain and which are, you know, controlling very sensitive data that, uh, frankly, there needs to be a lot of work to keep maintained and secure. Okay. Finally, and briefly, Sergey, you mm -hmm. talked earlier about privacy. Would you say that perhaps concerns about those privacy considerations uh, is actually perhaps deterring some institutions from actually uh, going on to Web3? Because clearly you've identified the problem, you know how it needs to be addressed, but until it is successfully dealt with, is it a bit of a deterrent? Is that, is that sort of keeping people away from it, some institutions? Or what, what's your experience? Yeah, of course, so it's, it's different for different use cases. If you just want to do custody, you can still do custody without privacy. If you want to do early versions of DeFi or early versions of compliant uh, financial products on chain, you don't necessarily need privacy. People are already starting to do that. More advanced use cases, I think, will, will need privacy. And the answer there in a technical sense is something called zero knowledge proofs. And I think the name also partly says it all because the name zero knowledge explains that the amount of information that's leaked from, from the process of using a zero knowledge proof should be minimal. So the, the approach is to continue to do computation outside of the chain, but to do it in a way that generates a proof and proves to everyone on the chain what the state of the data or the computation is off chain. And uh, the zero knowledge approach is something that's used to create scalability in our industry. And I think in Oracle Networks and in our work, it's used to create um, a certain degree of privacy for uh, things like identity data. So we're already starting to see zero knowledge solve some of the privacy concerns around identity data, and that'll make uh, all of these things more compliant. That's the most immediate version of this that I think will have the largest impact. Sure, good result. But we're going to have to leave it there, Sergey. But thank you so much for joining us. That was Sergey Nazarov, and he's co-founder of Chainlink. Thank you for being on Cybos TV.